This is Barbados Rum, the case for a GI. A perspective on why some believe Barbados needs a geographical indication for its rum. We are like the equivalent of Champagne in France or Blue Mountain Coffee in Jamaica. So you're building the name and reputation of Barbados Rum. And so one of the things you've got to do is you've got to protect it. You may hear talk about a geographical indication for rum, but what is it really? It's a type of intellectual property that identifies a product as originating from a specific geographic location where its quality, reputation and other characteristics are linked to that region. Master distiller and master blender for Square Factory, Richard Seal. If you go abroad and you see a bottle of Barbados rum, you assume it must have come from Barbados. You are very naive. They believe these things are, you know, rigorously policed and, and defined. And of course, that is absolutely not the case. Um, some best way to kind of sort of illustrate this would be, take say for example, if Barbados, you know, manufactured cars and we had tariff access, free access for our cars into the U European Union, as long as they had a they were made in Barbados. Well, what does made in Barbados mean? Suppose, for example, in my car assembly plant, I had, um, you know, I imported the engine. So, you know, the rules of origin are actually quite complex. That's the same thing when you come to uh, products, even agricultural products like rum. So, in the European Union, a bottle of Barbados rum may or may not contain 100% Barbados rum. In the European Union, statements of origin or optional and they're more or less just marketing terms and none of that's very relevant until you start actually building the value of Barbados rum which is of course is what we have been doing and Mangi have been doing so you're building the name and reputation of Barbados rum and so one of the things you've got to do is you've got to protect it because if you don't protect it, people will jump onto that value, but they wouldn't necessarily be making the product in the sense that I think any ordinary barbarian considers how you make the product, which is the manufactured product right up to the finish bottle product. So you can have a product in Europe being, manuf being sold as a barbarian rum with only a very tenuous link to the, with the island. And it's even worse than that when you think take a step back you're probably thinking well, hang on a minute when it ships doesn't it carry a CARICOM certificate of origin you know a shipment say a tanker of Barbados rum yeah that's correct but let me explain two caveats with that the first thing is our rules of origin and our uh, European partnership agreement allow for value added accumulation so what that means is just like our example of the car what that means is, is I could theoretically import some cheap uh, rum from Guatemala or Panama, blend it here with Barbados rum, and as long as I met the rules of origin in the EPA, which basically specified as long as I had enough value accrued in Barbados, I could ship that to Europe with a CARICOM product certification of origin, even though it was not 100% CARICOM product. And then, and this is the context of what I was referring to before, a product arriving with a certificate of origin into the European Union, and again I'm using that as an example because it's a big market, uh, that certificate is in order to get the, act, the entire free access on the EPA. Of course, once the product is inside the European Union, it can be modified in and substantially transformed in many ways. And since Barbados is not a protected origin, they, if they decide in their minds that the product is to be linked to Barbados, they'll link it to Barbados. And there's nothing we can do. Because, and if you're all outraged at this sort of concept, and you kind of instinctively understand why you might have to be flexible with a motor car on these rules, and you instinctively are horrified by that fact that these kind of rules can apply to an agricultural product like rum. That is where geographical indications come in. So when you have a product that you know 
must be specified in a much more rigorous way than a trade agreement and must be protected in a way that you may not protect some ordinary manufactured product. That is when you register geographical indication. That is when you go to the European Union and you say, Bob, this rum is special, and therefore we need to have this product protected so that if you use the word Barbados rum, because you can't stop anybody using the word Barbados or the word rum, but you can protect the word Barbados rum. Richard Seale observes that the most successful categories in wines and spirits in the world are protected by the designation of a GI. So, you know, the word bourbon or the word Scotch whiskey or the word champagne, you know, I might try to grow some grapes in Barbados and make a sparkling wine, but I can't call it champagne. And so this is the key. So when you protect the Barbados rum, you are indirectly also communicating that this is a very special part of the world for making rum. And so it, it lends itself, it's, it complements everything you're trying to do when you're investing in your brand and investing in your category. Coming up next, another supporter of the GI concept. We, particularly myself and Richard, Barbadians, have a real passion to see that this GI does not dilute or reduce our efforts. This is Barbados Rum, the case for a GI, a geographical indication for our rum. In 2006, Larry Warren and his family purchased St. Nicholas Abbey and turned it into a distillery, a small or boutique producer of local rum. Barbados has such a niche market um, marketing presence in the world. We are like the equivalent of champagne in France or Blue Mountain coffee in Jamaica. Um, our rum is well respected throughout the world. We, particularly myself and Richard, Barbadians, have a real passion to see that this GI does not dilute or reduce our efforts and the existing, um, the existing status that Barbados rum has overseas. Rum is very unusual in a spirit category, and this is a colonial vestige, in that so much branding has taken place outside of the region. So this is very unusual. I mean, today you might have a Scotch whiskey brand and maybe it's foreign owned, but it's, a, it's, a, it's an indigenous brand. Whereas in rum, you know, if you go abroad, you might see brands of rum you never ever heard of. And this is because they've been created outside. And so there's always been a vested interest uh, from multinationals to keep the status quo because it is in their vested interest for them to decide just how they use the Barbados or Jamaican name. They don't want Barbados or Jamaicans taking, taking that control of that destiny and taking that control of, of their economic rights. In other words, GIs are about accruing the economic value to the region where it's produced. So, you know, if I have a, a GI that specifies that Barbados or Jamaica rum is to be aged and bottled within the region, uh, that's because we want to accrue the added value. So when you, ma when you manufacture a product, you know, all the various steps of value that are added when it's manufactured, and one of the key motivations behind a GI is to accrue this value in the country in which, it, which is the name. But of course, if you're a multinational, that may not be in your financial interest. Uh, so therefore, multinationals basically want to use the word Barbados and Jamaica on their terms, not our terms. So the first step, the way GIs work, again, it's not similar to trademarks, you register at home under the legislation that's created at home, uh, and then you go out and register in the various uh, other territories. And so they had reached that stage, and then one of the Jamaican producers changed hands in 2017, and they've more or less been able to, again, foreign outside company, and they've more or less been able to disrupt the, um, 
the process and they're the same entity that also invested in Barbados in 2017 and so they've more or less been able to disrupt the process both in Barbados and Jamaica. Right now we have a scenario where we launched as we are entitled to do as the law provides uh, launched our application with Kaipo and that was in 2020 and for obvious reasons we know it couldn't have been processed we had a lot of lockdowns Kaipo, I know, um, is a bit understaffed. They're also overwhelmed with other issues, other regulatory issues. Uh, so that's why we we didn't announce until um, last year we had done the registration because we knew they had some genuine delays. But we're a little bit disappointed that nothing has really concrete has happened since. Um, at the end of the day, it's it's like any other intellectual property registration. Um, you know, uh, producers are are empowered under the Act to go and register, and that's what we've we've gone and done. And basically, we just want the law to be followed. And so, under the law, what should happen is is the GI should be published for any objections, uh, and therefore let any any producer that thinks they may be prejudiced by the registration let let them follow the law and make their objection that way um, what we don't like is this basically nothing happening and it, it, it gives the impression that um, that there's something more behind it than uh, than there should be you know the way the process would should work is is the application is launched the registrars there may be some to and fro on the details in the in the registration obviously you have to get it right then the next stage is um, publication in newspaper, make sure no one is, is, is prejudiced by the application. And in our case, no one can be prejudiced by the application because basically we just say about this rum is fermented, distilled, aged, and bottled in Barbados. So therefore, the only way you could say that you were prejudiced is if you didn't have the ability to do any of those steps. Um, so it doesn't prejudice anyone. Uh, so then, after the publication in the newspaper, then it gets registered uh, once any objections are, are dealt with. Then, once we have our local registration in hand, we head off then to go on register in the European Union. And one of the things we have discussed with the Ministry of Foreign Trade, who are enthusiastic supporters of the GA, is one of the things we want the, 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 the ministry to do is we want Barbados to join both the Madrid, Madrid Protocol and the Lisbon Protocol. If Barbados joins the Madrid Protocol, what that means is, is that if I register a trademark in Barbados, I automatically have trademark protection in, in the other member countries of the protocol. And the Lisbon Protocol is the same for registered GI. So once you register in one protocol member country uh, protection and all so of course this makes the process much much faster and much cheaper so that's something the Ministry of Foreign Trade really has to handle sign Barbados up to these protocols and then that makes makes us exporting industries makes our life much easier and really assists us greatly next in the series and so on the law what should happen is is the GI should be published for any objections uh, and therefore let any any producer that thinks they may be prejudiced by the registration let let them follow the law next week Richard Seal says don't let rum suffer the same fate as our sugar we had the absurdity that we would send our Barbados raw sugar to the UK to be refined in the UK and to, into branded branded little sugar to be re-imported to the Barbados shop this has been Barbados Rum, the case for a GI. I'm David Ellis.